In this movie, we're going to cover special fields. Special fields in Crystal refers to not data that's derived from your database, but as a result of your database. Case in point, take page number. By default, when we use the report wizard, Crystal automatically threw down a page number for us. If I click on the preview tab and scroll down to the bottom right hand corner, I get page one. Now let's go to the view and choose Field Explorer. If you haven't already, go ahead and uncollapse the Special Fields section. The first four aren't going to come too much in handy with a standalone crystal report, but everything after that can be used. I'm going to go ahead and highlight page N of M and drag it on to my report. Notice after I drag it on, it says page 1 of 6, so N of M refers to 1, 2, how many ever pages it goes. It's helpful if you have a large report. People can look down at the bottom and see, Woo, I've got a thousand more pages to go before I'm done. You can also put the total number of pages by scrolling all the way down to the bottom and you get a total page count, which you can also drag onto your report like so. As you can see, this is a result of the data that you've pulled based on your filters, your selection criteria, and your grouping. Notice these page numbers aren't stored in the database, but are rather a result set of pulling that data. Now let's go ahead and go to the Design tab, and let's go up to the top left-hand corner of the screen. By default, when we use the Report Wizard, Crystal puts in a print date. Print date is probably the most misunderstood special field that beginners have a hard time wrapping their head around. We also have a print time, which I'll drag onto the report here, and a print time zone, which I will also drag onto the report here. Now, I'm also going to drag data date right underneath print date, and I'm going to pull data time underneath print time, and then data time zone. And then I'm going to go ahead and hit preview, and scroll up to the top left-hand corner of my screen. The first line you see is the print date, the print time, and the print time zone. Now the time zone comes in handy if you're dealing with a national operation across all 50 states or an international operation involving multiple countries. Your database may be located in a location different from where you're sitting. It all depends on your setup. Notice our print time and our data time are different. Our dates are the same, but they are slightly different in time. What you need to understand is print date is the last time that the report successfully printed to the preview screen. So after a change or after saving, that time is always going to be updated. In fact, if we closed out and opened it up again, it would reflect the very first time that we reopened the file. The data date refers to the last time this report connected to the database and pulled data. This is a key difference. You need to know exactly when your report pull data from the database. Especially in a large real-time environment, you have new orders coming in, new transactions happening. It helps to know exactly when it was run, so that way you can avoid at least some of that nasty finger pointing and shooting the messenger when something on the report doesn't show up. The other fields that are available to us kind of depend on how much work we want to do. We can pull in the file creation date, the file path name, the modification date, the modification time. I'll pull in modification date up here, and the modification time. This is also helpful because it tells us the last time the report was successfully modified and saved. Sometimes this comes in handy when you're managing large amounts of crystal reports. Other options are available to you. You can also pull in the record selection formula, make this a little bit larger since it's big, and it's essentially everything you put in your select expert. It also kind of prints it in code instead of plain English, so it says in brackets office.division in east and west, but for the most part it's fairly simple to follow. Another option available to you is in the summary info. Notice in the summary info, I myself have personally put in my name and a brief description as well as a title I would like to save on this report. You have to do this manually. Crystal doesn't do this for you automatically. I find it's very helpful because you create a report for a specific reason at a specific time and if things change you can always go back look at your notes and see directly in the report what it was supposed to be. If you place those summary items into that you can actually pull them onto the report like so. You can also 
print the name of the person who wrote the report originally. You can also put the title of the report from that same summary section. A lot of it really depends on how organized you want to be. Speaking from experience, I find it very helpful to input this data so I have it for later when I forget and bang my head up against the wall trying to figure out why something doesn't do what I expect it to do.